Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome to week 10, 11, one of these weeks <laughs> of the What's Your Why series. And I know, I know, there has been a lot of a lot of great content that has came out over the past few weeks, but let me tell you something. This week, you are going to be blessed by this conversation. And the reason why I say that is because we are talking with none other than Pastor Paul J. Wingfield. Man, let me tell you something. When I initially scheduled the meeting with me and Pastor Wingfield, he was one of the first ones, actually. He was the first one to reach out and say, I want to be a part. I love what you're doing. Let's set something up. And he was the first person to inbox me and the first person to send me an email. And man, we connected. And as you see, man, this man of God, he got he got the oil, y'all. He got the oil. <laughs> but not for real he he is an awesome individual he does some great work and i'm going to put all the links to everything that he's doing because i want you guys to support um in our conversation man he dropped some golden nuggets um, about uh, being a young minister or being a young preacher or a young pastor in ministry you know one of the things that i feel like a lot of young um, preachers a, young, a lot of young uh, ministers struggle with and i struggle with this too is that we want to grow as fast as we can as large as we can you know well i'll say that again we want to grow as large as we can as fast as we can we want the big numbers um but he gives such a great oh my gosh a great analogy and it all comes from john 15 and it comes from his personal testimony his personal story um and i'm not going to tell you because i want you to listen to it but you know, he gives such a great testimony. He gives such great nuggets. And I'm like, man, dude, whoever is feeding you this stuff, man, he is he is awesome. Of course, it's God, you know, duh. But, <laughs> but you know, I, I really enjoyed this conversation, man. This is my brother, man. We we connected on, on another level. And you'll see in the, in the conversation, man, this is a great, this is a great guy. Uh, please support his ministry. He is a youth pastor who pastors other youth pastors uh all across this country man he does um international ministry uh he has um he he's a part of nexus international um uh, they are a group of individuals who does wilderness ministries meaning that they take individuals they take young um people take them on these um great excursions to explore the world explore um you know countries in, in a lot of different senses but at the same time you know they they intermingle all of that with the gospel you know, finding ways to 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 share the gospel in very unique ways. And what's funny is, you know, I actually had an experience like that before um, when I was a kid. Um, it wasn't necessarily a wilderness experience. <laughs> My sister would know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but we had an experience where we went to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we went to uh, a cabin um, with a, a, a young adult group. Um, of, a, of another church um, when we were kids and we just had a ball had a blast and they shared the gospel with us there um, and you know I love that type of stuff that type of ministry because you know a lot of people in this world today they need some sort of connections things that they can connect with things that they you know love and, and want to be a part of and if wilderness ministry or if you love being in the outdoors you love doing things like that uh, you're going to really enjoy what this man of God is saying in this conversation. And not only that, you're going to enjoy what the ministry is all about. I'm going to put the video because I want you guys to see everything, see everything that Nexus is doing, see what this man of God is doing. Uh, and I want you guys to support, please support this man of God. You know, he is doing phenomenal work, uh, but this phenomenal work takes, you know, um, a toll sometimes. And it takes, you know, phenomenal um, resources to be able to pull this stuff off. So if you are listening and you would love to support this man of God in any way, please support um, Pastor uh, Paul Wingfield. Um, you can go to his website. All the links in this, it will be in the description. Everything will be posted below. But please, I, I'm saying this because I really love what this man of God is doing. I sow the seed into his ministry. I sow the seed into what he's doing because I truly believe in what he's doing and what God is going to do with him. So without further ado, um, please enjoy the conversation between me and Pastor Paul Wingfield here on One Faith Radio. I'm good. How are you? 
I'm excellent. I'm, I'm loving excellent. the beer, man. Loving hey, the beer. Hey, you too, man. <laughs> Good. So um, I appreciate you taking this time to talk with me. Um, it'll, I, like I said, it'll be a very um, relaxed, straightforward conversation. Um, I don't want to, um, you know, have it be any anything awkward, anything like that. Um, I just, you know, I really want it to be just a, a straight flowing conversation, everything like that. So um, I'm literally waking up, not even <laughs> an hour ago. <laughs> Quarantine has really messed messed up my schedule. So Dude, I work from home, and we started working from home back in March, and it's like since then my whole schedule has just been all over the place <laughs> i wake up at like either nine o'clock nine thirty, <laughs> log in and i'm just logged in for the rest of the day yeah. but it's like before i would be up at like eight at around seven o'clock we taking the kids to school getting everything going and i'm wired and wide awake by now yeah. so please forgive me if i'm a little <laughs> if i'm a little rusty i got my coffee here so i can you know hey. keep, keep everything going <laughs> We're in good company then, so exactly. I got mine as well. Yeah, <laughs> quarantine's messed me up too, man. I uh, at first, like when I couldn't get together with my students, I was like, ah, we're gonna play, um, we're gonna play Call Call of Duty on Xbox till two in the morning, <laughs> right? So it messed me up big time. And just recently, I had to kind of get get out of that rhythm because it was it was hurting me, dude. It was hurting me real bad. So yeah, I uh, I got a one of my youth leaders uh, wanted somebody to work out with, mm -hmm. but the only time he can work out is at 5 a.m. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, my schedule's been getting up at like 4.40 for the last week, two wow. weeks. So. Have you been enjoying it? I have been, actually. I feel really good uh, really? for the day until about uh, 12 o'clock, and then I'm just like, oh, dude, I'm so <laughs> tired. <laughs> it's rough, exactly. man. Yeah. I need to get back into it, man. I, I, we've been trying to um, get everything going. It's, we just recently moved down here, so we're still trying to figure out – um, everyone we're in Charlotte North Carolina so we're oh, trying to man. figure out everyone trying to get to know different people and different things like that so I really right. want to get back into working out we were doing it a lot uh, we were into it we were heavy into it before we moved down and since we moved it's been like eh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. but we'll get back in it so yeah, yeah I'm excited I'm excited about um, this conversation I'm excited about talking to you um now you say you oversee churches in South Africa, right? Or you oversee in, in Latin America, in South well, Latin, yeah, Latin America. America, so Central America, uh, South America. Um, I'm I'm a part time youth pastor here at my my home church. Uh, I'm only like three hours from you. I live uh, in a little town called Kingsport, Tennessee, near okay. Johnson City, um, not too far from Charlotte. But my 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 full time gig is I'm basically a pastor to to youth pastors. Uh, awesome. in Latin America. And we, we help teach them and train them how to uh, utilize Jesus's method of ministry of mm -hmm. disciple making and focusing on a few to reach the many. Uh, and we also uh, utilize uh, or give them a tool of uh, training them in like how to use wilderness adventure, uh, backpacking trips, rock climbing, um, stuff like that to capture the hearts of these young people as well. Oh, that's cool. So, that's really cool, man. Yeah. That's cool. So yeah. you're, you're a youth pastor. And you pastor other youth pastors. Yes, sir. That's pretty dope. Yes, that's, uh, <laughs> and then that's kind of where I, I've always kind of felt my calling was, was um, caring for leaders because, man, that is something that um, many, many times leaders just don't have. They don't mm -hmm. have somebody to care for them, uh, especially overseas. They, they don't have a really healthy community around them at all. Um, mm -hmm. So. Uh, it leads to early burnout, and, and that's not our heart's desire. Is we want to see these guys in ministry for the long haul. Yeah, we help definitely. keep them alive <laughs> in ministry. Yeah, definitely. So, are you a Tennessee Titan fan, brother? Um, <laughs> I football. First of all, pro football is. I, I don't even keep up with it, man. Really? And I would. I, I don't. It's. I don't know if it's just college football is so much different. I feel like there's just a lot more passion. And I'm and I'm not even a Tennessee Volunteers fan, and I live in this place. <laughs> wow. I'm, I've been I've been an Alabama fan since I was like ten. So roll tide, you know. Roll tide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm big in in NFL, college football. Um, my cousin now he is huge, and he's an Oklahoma Sooners fan. Okay. He is like gung ho in it. Um, he's on one of my um podcasts. That's actually um Aaron today. Um, he's on that one. 
he's gung ho at Oklahoma Sooners. He knows all the college football players mm-hmm. that's about to hit the pro. Like he can tell you all their stats, what they're doing. I'm like, bro, yeah. I, I just, I'm just here for the pros. <laughs> I watch, but, you know? <laughs> but I feel the same way about basketball. Like to, for me, the NBA. I hate to say it, but the NBA has gotten boring to me over the last few years. Mm-hmm. And I would much rather prefer watching college basketball. And maybe yeah. that's just how old I am, me getting old. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I always prefer to watch college basketball. I'm a big Tar Heels fan. I love watching uh, March Madness whenever that rolls around. You know, I, I really go crazy when March Madness hits. And I, I need to really tone it down some. <laughs> but um, but I, just, I just love college basketball. Like you said, the passion is just there in those young guys. And it's like, I don't say it kind of escapes when they get to the NBA level. You really don't really see them get passionate until it's around the playoffs and mm-hmm. the finals time. Yeah. But, you know, that's that's just how I am. That's that's just So me. with you being a Tar Heels fan, I, I can already assume your answer for the GOAT is Jordan. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Okay, good. Exactly. We're in, I'm a good company, man. <laughs> good. I do believe that, you know, LeBron has made um, some significant strides. Um, I'm I'm proud of the work that he has done off the court. Absolutely, I'm proud of what he has done on the court. I mean, the guy has literally revolutionized the game. He changed the game yeah. for his era, um, and it's so funny. He changed the game from from 2000. Shoot, he'd been in the league forever. But honestly, I would say from like 2010 to about 2015 ish, he literally changed the game. Like Absolutely. there was nobody that can beat him. Um, I was up until now, but honestly, when Steph Curry came into the league, he kind of shifted things. He shook things up and he changed the game yeah. tremendously. Everyone yeah. wants to shoot three now. And so <laughs> I, I, I'm like, man, I just, I, I'm a big basketball guy. I love basketball, but I still think NBA is kind of boring to me, but <laughs> that's just my preference. So yeah, yeah I definitely Jordan is the GOAT. Um, I think that LeBron, he is, he is in the, he is in close conversations because of just how much he's accomplished over the years. I'll agree. I mean, the guy is still going and he's like a freak of nature. I mean, his, <laughs> for yeah. that guy to be almost in his, um, what is it, mid to late thirties. And he's just built like a machine and, and still going. Yeah. It's scary. <laughs> yeah. Hands scary. Down. I hope that I can, uh, that's getting back into working out. I hope I can be that way when I'm 40. Right. <laughs> the same way i'm like man not to that I really gotta get that's a lot of work exactly know. exactly i mean ministry in and of itself man it requires a lot it really yeah. does and it requires um you know us to really be in good shape um i know people don't believe that there are a lot of i hate to say overweight preachers but there are, there are a lot of overweight preachers but even they will tell you you know it requires a lot of strength to really yeah. to do the work um of a minister every single day yeah. um get up and preach for hours. Um, if you, if you have a, a ministry where you have multiple services, you know, you have to constantly be, constantly yeah. be on the go. And then, um, as soon as the service services end, it ends, you have other obligations to do during the week. You have your family, you have, you know, of course your church <laughs> because that never stops. And then you always have members constantly calling you, texting you, yeah. hitting you up and you know, different things like that. So, and you, I know with you as a youth pastor, you definitely um, catch it on all angles with the kids. <laughs> Always have to be at their events and, and support and different things like that. So yep. um, I applaud you for what you're doing, especially um, in your local church and also for what you're doing um, for the uh, youth pastors that are overseas. Man, that is, it's, it takes a special kind of person to have a heart for people that um, are overseas and doing ministry overseas. And I think that, you know, that, that's just awesome and dope in and of itself. You know, you're thinking, you're literally thinking about um, taking the ministry, extending the ministry beyond <laughs> the four walls of the church and yeah. beyond just what we're accustomed to here on in America and mm-hmm. really, you know, equipping the saints across the world, mm-hmm. which is awesome. So, yeah, good, <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. No problem. No problem. So, um, yeah, I, we can go ahead and jump right into it. Um, I, I love your spirit. Um, I feel like we, we're getting a good vibe. So, yeah, <laughs> I, like I said, I, I just want this to be a good conversation, a great flow. Uh, I'm not going to ask you anything that's going to trip you up. And I haven't done a deep dive into your personal history to try to come up with some, <laughs> with some crap. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got all I have is um, based off of our conversation when um, when we initially met on um, on CPA, 
Christian Podcast Association. We yep. reached out. And it's all I have <laughs> um, okay. from, from yeah. there to now. Um, and I sent you the questions as a heads up. Like, hey, I just want you to see what we're doing, what I'm trying to accomplish. And don't want you to think that I'm trying to come left field any questions. Now, I will ask some questions okay. that may not be on this list, but that will just come out of our conversation as yeah, a genuine as a flow. So I'm good with it. Cool. So I'll give you a little bit about myself before I, you know, ask you about you. Okay. Um, a little bit about me. I am a licensed and ordained elder um, in the Church of God in Christ here in um, Charlotte, North Carolina, or Concord, North Carolina. Um, I've been ordained for now going on three years. Um, yeah, three years um, coming up in August uh, when I was ordained. Oh, wow, it don't even seem like it was that long ago. <laughs> it seemed like it was just yesterday. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. Excuse me, sorry. So we have um, the church I attend here um, is Breakthrough Ministries Church of God in Christ. Um, and the church I attend back home was Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Um, and basically, uh, a little bit of a background about church. Are you familiar with the Church of God in Christ? Uh, somewhat. Yeah. Somewhat. Yeah. So it's, we're like the, I don't know, we're like the largest Pentecostal church in um, America. We have churches all over the place um, with the headquarters being in uh, actually Memphis, Tennessee um, and um, with Temple Church of God in Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, it's um, a largely denomination um, that's filled with great people, filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay. Um, and um, I love it. I love being a part of this church. I love being a part of the ministry. Uh, I love being a part of uh, what we're doing as a church and as a people. And um, I'm excited about, you know, what we're, what we're doing to extend ministry beyond the four walls as well. Um, in addition to that, you know, I've launched one faith um, out of a, I would say out of a call per se from God. Um, so this radio opportunity kind of just fell into my lap mm -hmm. um, recently um, my friend, he has a radio show uh, with WDRB Media. Uh, he submitted my name to them to uh, reach out for free radio advertising. I didn't even know that, you know, I would be considered for <laughs> anything such as nice. So I um, took the opportunity to um, get the free radio advertising and I've given it to my uncle um, at his church, um, Breakthrough Ministries, uh, where I attend, uh, mainly because I want to help him um, grow his ministry, want to help him out a lot. And um as I was explaining all of that, it kind of turned into a interview session <laughs> and um, actually ended up getting the job for, um, for becoming a radio ho show host with wow. WDRB media. So they have over, it's basically talk radio. They have over a hundred um, radio show hosts. And, you know, I was really fortunate to have this opportunity kind of fall into my lap. Amazing. And so it's a 30 minute show that airs every Wednesday. Um, I've, always said I want a radio show, which is weird. And, and it's like, God literally just <laughs> heard me talking about it all the time. It just, you know, blessed me with this opportunity. Yeah. And I've been always saying I wanted to do a podcast. I've always wanted to, you know, start, you know, getting myself out there like that. But I was always scared to do it. Um, I would say maybe about three to five years ago. Um, I know that's a huge gap, but <laughs> that's literally when I wanted to um, really launch this thing. I really wanted to do it. But I just, I was scared to do it, didn't know really what direction I wanted to go with it. And it wasn't until recently that really God kind of gave me the um, the vision for One Faith and the vision for everything um, pertaining to the radio show and the podcast. And so it's been a, it's been a journey. It really has been a journey. Um, and I'm appreciative and I am definitely here for the ride and I love it. And basically One Faith is um, definitely spirit spirit led. Um, it's biblically based off of Ephesians 4 and 5, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And, mm -hmm. you know, the sole purpose of one faith is to unite the body of Christ um, across mm -hmm. ethnicities, anything that kind of keeps us, you know, away, ethnicities, um, denominations, whatever our differences are. Uh, one thing that I have realized is that we may be different across these various um, these various boundaries, but one of the things that does bring us together is our shared hope and faith in Jesus Christ. We all preach out of the same Bible. Uh, we yeah. all believe the same thing at the end of the day um, that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so yeah. that's what it's all about. It's about, you know, promoting unity, promoting people, um, people that's doing great things like what you're doing <laughs> and, um, you know, giving them that chance to talk about um, a lot of the tough things they want to talk about, or in this case, 
talk about um, what's your why um, yeah. and you know different things like that so it's not a gossip show or anything like that to try to be all messy that's not my intentions I, I really want this thing to be pure um, I really want this thing at the end of the day to be a ministry you know I want people mm-hmm. to see what we're you know see what we're doing um, connect with what we're doing see themselves in us in some way um, and find some kind of purpose in, in doing life um, and achieving mm-hmm. their dreams so that's <laughs> that's one faith that's who I am um, I'm married I have two kids just found out we um, are expecting another one so congratulations <laughs> thank that's you awesome yeah we're having a quarantine baby <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know it's been we've been blessed it's, we've been really blessed and um and I'm I'm appreciative of everything that God is doing, especially yeah. um, just seeing how his hand is on this ministry and on mm-hmm. this radio show and podcast. Um, when I put that post out there last week, asking for pastors, you know, I was um, overwhelmed with um, just emotions and kind of, um, I don't, I don't cry or anything like that, but, <laughs> but I was just overwhelmed because, you know, I thought that, you know, it was so um, dope that so many pastors, so many people had a heart to help um, and yeah. would just reach out and support and say, Hey, I would love to be a part of this, whatever you need, let me know. Mm-hmm. Um, and just seeing that support, it just gave me, you know, a shot in the arm, like, let's go, let's get it, let's do it. Yeah. And I'm just excited about this. I'm excited to talk to you. I've already talked to about, um, about four. Yeah. You're my fifth pastor I'm talking to now. So I've talked to about four pastors already. Um, every single one of them has given me some great nuggets, some great knowledge, some great content. <laughs> So I know you're not going to lack in that area. <laughs> it's not to be, not to put any pressure on you. Not at all. Man. But, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited about the conversation. I'm excited about everything. Um, I'm going to stop talking because I can ramble. And my, my wife is usually my producer. <laughs> she keeps me on the straight and narrow, but she's mm-hmm. asleep right now. <laughs> so I'm going to go, um, go ahead and stop talking. Um, and just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, about what you're doing and everything like that. Yeah, so my name is Paul Wingfield. Um, I will actually, what is today? Today's, today's July 8th. I'll yep. be 32 at the end of this oh, wow. month. Oh, wow. Um, Happy birthday. We don't speak yeah. um, before noon. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, man, I've been married for going on nine years. Uh, awesome. to my beautiful wife, Erin. we got three crazy kiddos. Uh, <laughs> I got a, uh, my oldest son, River, is nine. Um, my second son is Sawyer. He's six. And my little girl, Everly, uh, is three, and uh, she is a ball of fire. She I is, believe it. Uh, the one kid that I didn't want to be just like me is going to be her. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm definitely preparing myself for the teenage years already. Yes. Um, and I'm going to need a lot of grace. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, but I've, so I've been doing ministry. I've been involved with youth and doing youth ministry um, locally and internationally uh, for – uh, going on eight years now, um, seven or eight years. Um, the first five were uh, locally here in, in the region I live in, in uh, Northeast Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then about three years ago, I started working with a, a missions organization uh, called Nexus International. Um, we, we travel all over the world, but I work in Latin America. So mm-hmm. all of Central America, all of South America, our heart is to find and equip and encourage youth pastors and youth leaders to um, to invest in young people in their culture and in and, and modeling the same way that Jesus did it um, yeah. by, by making disciples, right? Investing yeah. in a few to reach the many. So yeah, man, the Lord, the Lord's blessed me in, in, in so many ways. And uh, I'm very fortunate uh, just for, for what he's, what he's doing in my life, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really fortunate. I love that. I love that. So you said your little girl is a ball of fire. She, <laughs> she's the one that's keeping you on your toes and up and <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> it's funny because like with the, with the with our third one coming, it makes me think like I wonder how this child is going to act because my son um, Morel, he's um, six. He's the oldest, and he's he's a sweetheart. He's really is. He's he's a sweet boy. He's a good kid. My daughter, Tegan. She's a she's a sweetheart too, but she's a little bit more feisty and she's more independent. She does her own thing, and it's just like you know she's a, she she has my heart. I I can never just that she has my heart, 
And it's like, I wonder how this third child is going to change the game. Like, <laughs> I wonder what this child is going to be like. Because yeah. I can see myself so much in my son. I see myself in my daughter a little bit, but I see more of my wife and my daughter. And now it's like, I wonder if this third child is going to have a mixture of us both, or mm-hmm. if this child is just going to have their own personality. And I'm just, I don't say I'm scared, but I'm just interested to see yeah. how this child is going to be. Like, it's just weird. I, I never thought, well, we did, we initially we said we wanted four kids and here we are on our third. And I just never thought like, man, I would have four kids because my, my children are six and five, I mean, seven, sorry, my son just turned seven uh, back in May or seven and my daughter will be six in October. So you, we've been, I won't say we've been out of the game for about seven. Yeah, we've been out of the game for about seven to six years. And here we are getting back in it. And it's like, man, it's like, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> You're ready. I'm but I'm second. excited. How, how is it with three kids? I, I was in the same boat. I was like, you know, three, we've had two. Like, it can't be that much different, right? But, man, we shifted from a man defense to a zone. And that <laughs> makes a big difference, bro. A big I difference. I believe it. <laughs> um, and we wouldn't change it for anything, but man, it's uh, it's definitely uh, a, a different dynamic. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. And I just love to like just listening to you talk about uh, your kid, your son, and your daughter, and, and thinking about like, and what's what's my next child going to be like? What's their personality going to be like? And I love the the picture that that paints of of, of the human race and how yeah. we are all created in the image of the Father. And we all have different personalities. We all have different characteristics that reflect him. Yeah. And man, I just, I love, I love that we can see that in our own children. Uh, yeah. It's a beautiful thing, man. It is a beautiful thing. And honestly, that's exactly what, what you said was spot on because that's exactly what one faith is. We're all different. We all have, we have different unique gifts, abilities, things. I'm not trying to say we're like superheroes, <laughs> but we all have different gifts that we bring to the body of Christ. Uh, we all think differently. We have different opinions. And because of that, you know, we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't separate ourselves because because of that. Or we shouldn't shun one, one side of people because they think differently than us. You know, they just, you know, looking at it from a different angle or, you know, we may be so far ahead in our walk with Christ that, you know, they're thinking of it, they're thinking about it from a infancy stance. Yeah. And we have to really, you know, learn how to navigate through those tough conversations navigate through those emotions navigate through egos opinions and really yeah. find the truth in what we're doing um as christians you know we should be up building um mm-hmm. the body of christ not tearing each other down even though we with everything that's going on from mm-hmm. the, the racism that's going on right now to the pandemic you know we shouldn't be dividing but Absolutely. we see a lot of <laughs> we see a lot of people just taking sides over this thing i'm like people <laughs> we're all christians yeah. let's let's band together let's get together and let's just find common ground um yeah. and just put all our hope in jesus as it should be mm-hmm. so all right so i'm excited i'm excited about this conversation we're, we're gonna have a good time bro yeah, <laughs> so um we'll just jump right into it uh, what's your why and i'll give you a little bit of background on that question um that question really came out of a conversation that i had with a um, young lady last week um, she was just asking me, what is your why? And of course, I know what my why is for for ministry and for, of course, for one faith. But it just really made me think, you know, hey, there's a lot of people out here that would love to start doing something, but they just don't know how. And they don't know what their why is. Um, and excuse me, for us in ministry, we know what our why is initially. Um, it either comes from um, our call or it comes from just, you know, being in it for a while and then bam, we're like, oh. That's why I'm doing it, um, yeah. you know, and I want to use this theme or this series to help people understand what their why is for life, mm-hmm. what's their purpose, what's their theme. And I was talking to a pastor yesterday uh, and he said, yeah, your, your language is what's your why. Mine is what's your currency, my currency mm-hmm. for life. And, and that's what I want it to be about, you know, what is our why? What mm-hmm. is our purpose? What is our currency? And for you, I'm pretty sure, man, I, I'm excited to hear what your why is because you're doing it all over the place. <laughs> so yeah, what's your why? That is, uh, I love that question. Uh, and, and, I, and I've struggled with that question or, or been, been faced with that question several times through my, my time in ministry. Um, but I'll say when I was a young leader, when I first got involved in ministry, you know, I was, uh, I was, I was probably 23 when I first 
started and started mm -hmm. really diving in and growing and, and wanting to lead and, and to serve with young people. And I was pretty arrogant. I'm not going to lie. I thought I knew everything. I knew how everything worked. Um, and I was going to do it my way or the highway. Right. And I remember uh, meeting uh, a gentleman and, and part of what I do with youth ministry is we do adventure based like wilderness ministry mm -hmm. uh, stuff as a way to connect with them. And I met this guy uh, that was this wilderness ministry guru in my mind. And I was going to ask him the secret formula for what does or how do I grow my youth ministry, and my wilderness ministry. Mm. And I was expecting this A plus B equals growth formula, right. right? Do this and this, and you will have hundreds of kids come and be a part of your ministry. Right. And we were backpacking in the middle of January uh, in North Carolina mm. and wow. freezing cold. We shouldn't yeah. have been there. I was overpacked and out of shape. It was awful. <laughs> um, and this, this man, this gentleman's from, uh, he was from Ecuador. Um, and I remember asking him when we got in the tent, we ate and I said, Hey, so how do I grow my ministry? Right. I've earned this right to ask him this, this question. And he looked at me and I'll never forget. He said, well, pick one or two people, deeply invest in them and pour your life into them and teach them to do the same for a few others. And your ministry will grow. Wow. And I said, man, you're full of crap. Right. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I proceeded to try ministry my way to try to be to try to bring as many students to into my events and programs that I that, as I could. Um, and I put people in positions of leadership just for their skill set, but not for their heart. Oh, wow. um, and after a year of doing this and I was proclaiming the gospel on these trips, and students were hearing that. But I didn't see any life change in the hearts of these students. I didn't see them changing their behaviors. I didn't see them growing deeper in Christ. And my leaders were, were infants in, 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 as well. They, they weren't be able to nurture others because they needed nurturing themselves. Right. And I thought, man, I've missed the mark somewhere. And so I called that guy back up and I said, I think you were right when you said how it worked. And I would like to know how. And the first question he asked me when we got back together was, was not, okay, what, what step did you take wrong in your ministry? Um, again, I thought he was going to give me the secret formula. And the first thing he did was he said, Paul, how is your heart? How is your walk with Christ? Wow. I said, man, I'm, a, I'm on staff at a church. I'm good. Let's right. talk about ministry. Right. He said, I don't care about your ministry. I care about your heart. Wow. And then he proceeded to, to paint this picture, um, that is, is pretty clearly painted in scripture with John 15, I remember sitting on his back porch, looking out uh, in the woods, and he said, how do these trees work? You know, what's the most important part of these trees? Uh, everybody knows the roots, right? They provide uh, a foundation they're, they're of being rooted in the ground and holding this tree solid. Um, it sucks up water and nutrients from the soil, and it, and it waters the whole tree. And he said, exactly. He said, you've been so focused on the fruit of your ministry that you've neglected your roots. Wow. And what happens when that happens? Mm. Well, the whole tree dies. But on the contrary, if you focus on being rooted and abiding in Christ, mm. then fruit comes inevitably, no matter what. Mm. And I thought, oh my That's gosh. That's good. I've never thought about that. I've never, I mean, Christ says in John 15, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me and I abide in you, you will bear much fruit. Mm -hmm. And as that perspective changed in my mind, the Lord began um, giving me my why. He said, you know, Paul, there's probably a lot of other leaders out there that are solely focused on the fruit of their ministry and mm -hmm. their roots are being neglected. Mm -hmm. I want you to go and share with them what I've told you. I said, okay, well, <laughs> okay, I'll do it. <laughs> so when you, when you ask, what is my why? My why is uh, I want everyone to know. I want everyone to know that our life and our ministry and, and everything that we can have in this life on this earth is found in one place. And that's being rooted and abiding in Jesus Christ. Right, man. That's powerful, man. It makes me, Gosh, that 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 really jumps my heart. Like it really jumps my spirit. That is powerful because so many times you see a lot of young people that jump into ministry. They're they're just like you and just like me. You know, we want we want the numbers. You know, we see. Um, Pat, are you familiar with Pastor Michael Todd with Transformation Church? Yeah. 
yeah. that we see how how he blew up overnight. We're like, that's what we want. We want to see that. Right. You know, we want to be the next Stephen Furtick. We want to be the next. You know, th- these different people. But at the end of the day, it's all about your relationship with Christ. It's all about mm-hmm. what is rooted in your heart. And I love that. That is that is probably the greatest nugget that I've heard so far. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, everyone. Yeah, I've talked to they. They've given some great nuggets, but that one right there, I think you. I might put that one out to release. I might release that one early because I love that. <laughs> but you know, it just it speaks so much to ministry because um, so oftentimes we look at things and we and we get discouraged easily if you know people aren't um, buying into it initially, and that's somewhat with, with me with what I'm doing with this one faith thing. You know, um, I've been in this thing for about a month. And, and when I first started, you know, I was like, man, people are not listening. You know, I'm putting everything out there. You know, I'm not getting the likes. Nobody's really engaging with me. And it was like, I'm like, I, I know my heart is in the right place, but, you know, I, I really want to see the numbers. You know, I really want to reach people. But honestly, it wasn't until I had a conversation with um, a young lady um, who is a part of the One Faith fam, um, Brandy Banks, and she has her own movement, the Forgiveness Movement, and she was telling me that, hey, I, you people, you put stuff out there, people actually are paying attention to what you're doing. Uh, they're looking at what you're doing, but a lot of times they'll, you know, keep scrolling it and they'll come back to it later. But, you know, are you looking at it from that perspective that you want people to get it, or are you looking at it from the perspective that, you know, you're doing it for God? Because when you do it for God, it's gonna it's gonna grow. Because whatever you do for God, He's gonna bless it. And she was like, it'll it'll launch, it'll take off, uh, in in due season. But you know, you really have to look at yourself and look at you know what why are you doing this for? And even mm-hmm. with the conversation with with Meg um, and Christian Podcast Association, um, she spoke about the same thing and was like, you know, your why? What is she, when she kept asking me what is my why? And I told her, it was like, man, you know, it really made me think about you know am I doing this for myself or am I really doing this to reach people, um, to help people? Cause my whole heart is about helping people. I just yeah. really want to help people at the end of the day, but you know, to help people, you have to be in good standing with God. You have to be um, at a place in your walk with Christ to where you can, <clears throat> you can allow God to minister to you and it hits you first and then you take it out to others. And yeah. then you um, pour into others, similar to what, what, what happened with you. You know, mm-hmm. when the guy spoke into your life and told you that, you know, you internalized that. And then God said, okay, I want you to take that word and give it to other people. And that's exactly what it's all about. You know, we have to be rooted in Christ. We have to be rooted um, in our walk because one of the reasons why I believe that we have to be rooted is because we're going to see some things in ministry. And I'm pretty sure you've, you've seen some things. You've experienced some things where you wanted to quit and you wanted to give up. But mm-hmm. if we stay rooted in our walk, in our relationship with Christ, you know, that's number one. If we stay rooted in that, no matter what comes our way, you know, we will never be swayed or we will never be um, to the point where we're like, you know what, I just give up because I don't see God in this. No. If we stay rooted, we see God in everything. We see God in the good. We see God in the bad. We see God in every aspect of this walk, of this thing, uh, of ministry. And so, I, yeah, I love that. I love that. Uh, that's a great nugget. I'm, I'm going to steal that. <laughs> well, it was not mine to steal. You can, you're taking it straight from Jesus. So Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to quote you on it, though. I'm going to quote you. I'm going to give you the credit. <laughs> God gave it to you, and you give it to us. <laughs> All right, so... What is your um, testimony for salvation? And I, uh, I grew up here in, in Tennessee, uh, in the, in the, right in the middle of the Bible Belt, right? Yeah. Um, and so Christianity here uh, was very cultural. Uh, it's just right. what people did. You know, right. you would talk to people, and, and just as soon as you would meet somebody, it was just like, oh, hey, oh, where do you work? Where do you go to church? Like, it was just in, in passing that you went to church. Mm-hmm. Everybody does. Um, so when I was 10, uh, I, I went to a church with my grandparents, um, and, I, and I firmly remember just like being, we were at a, uh, it was like a VBS type deal, um, and I remember being in the sanctuary, and uh, the, the guy that was uh, preaching, I was just, I remember he was saying and telling us about our need for salvation and our need um, to be 
reunited and reconciled to God because of our separation, because of sin. And I just remember feeling this, this overwhelming feeling in my heart that I was just being pulled forward to just say, I need that, you know, and yeah. I, I recognize it as just like, you know, the Holy Spirit at work in me, drawing me to the Father. Yeah. Um, and I went up there, I accepted Christ. And, but after that, there was, there was nobody that really stepped into my life to begin discipling me. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was always this thing. It was like, oh, you, you said the prayer, you got your salvation card, right? I had it in my back pocket. Um, uh, it was more my, my fire insurance, right? From eternity. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that I needed to pursue a lifelong relationship of, of being with Jesus. And so after that, I was like, Hey, I'm good, man. I can do what I want. And up into high school, I began to, uh, just from some things in my own past, I had some, uh, just some, my own kind of trauma and issues where I needed to be liked by people. And so I would, I would do really whatever I needed to do to be liked by people and to gain friendship. And so I've, I had this huge God sized hole in my heart and I was trying to fill it with anything that I could. Mm -hmm. Um, and so through that time period, high school call, uh, I didn't go to, I dropped out of college, um, uh, but ha halfway through my first semester, uh, because I was just, I was partying, man. I was partying too much. Yeah. And I remember I moved out West to Colorado went and started a whitewater rafting business uh, with a friend of mine in Wisconsin after that and continued to just try to fill these, th this hole in my heart that only God could fill. Right. Um, and I remember it was when I was dating this girl, she's my wife now, she's my girlfriend then. Mm -hmm. And we, I wasn't following Jesus at all. So there was nothing on my mind about how I needed to live a Christ-like life. So we didn't have a holy relationship with one another. We were having sex outside of marriage. Right. And I remember she got pregnant and I thought, right. Oh my goodness. Um, what are we going to do? Like I'm 22 at this point. Like, what am I going to do? Um, so up until the moment that my son was born and you being a father will understand this, the moment my son was born uh, and I looked at this little, this little baby that I had only been in this world for 30 seconds, mm -hmm. but immediately as soon as I held him and as soon as I saw him, I had this overwhelming and unconditional love yeah. for him. He didn't earn it. He didn't have any kind of personality or characteristic traits that, that gave, that granted him my favor or my love, yeah. but it was unconditional. And for the rest of his life, I would love him no matter what, mm -hmm. nothing he could do would take that away. Mm -hmm. and in that moment, I heard God speak clearly. He said, because of Jesus, this is how I look at you. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Yes. And so I, I, that is when I started following Christ was when I was uh, 22, about to turn 23. Um, so I was saved at 10 and I started following Christ 13 years later when I was 23. Yeah, man, honestly, your story, it sounds so much similar to mine. It's so, <laughs> it's so crazy because like I got saved when I was eight. Um, my mom had cancer. Um, and at the time, the Lord, I mean, well, at the time, the doctors only gave her two to three years to live. And so yeah. being scared and being a kid, you know, it was like, I'm just going to get saved. If my mom passes, yeah. then she'll know that I'm saved. I'm good. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I'll just go from there. And after I got saved, you know, I, you know, we were in, we were in church a lot. We were in church a, a whole lot. Um, mm -hmm. And I grew up in the church, um, played the drums, did everything, you know, sung in the choir, was on the usher board, on the step team, on, on involved in everything. My mom had me and my mom and my dad had me involved in everything. But, you know, I, I would say that I wasn't really walking with Christ like that either, because mm -hmm. as a kid and as a young adult, you know, you're, you want to do your own thing. You're not really thinking about this God thing. You're not really thinking about Jesus yeah. like that. I mean, you, he's there in the back of your mind, but at the same time, you know, you're so young and impressionable. Everything mm -hmm. looks better. Like you can look on TV. I know at the time we, it was BET and MTV, VH1, all the music videos. You were like, hey, man, I want to be like them. I want to be on, I want to be out there and be doing all that. I want to be on the beach with, with, with all these females and stuff. You know, you see that stuff. You like, you admire that life. And you start to pull, you see that pool and you start to go towards it. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, event for me, <laughs> it's funny because when I went off to college and it's so funny, you said like your first semester, you were partying so much and you dropped out. I, my first semester was 
I think everyone will say this. Their first semester was just the worst. Like, yeah. <laughs> cause you're there, it's like, I'm by myself for the first time. I don't have nobody looking over me. I don't have nobody, you know, <laughs> trying to keep up, to keep tabs yeah. with me. I can go party all night and come back and, and go to the calf, the calf be open. We're good. And that's honestly the life I lived. You know, we party, we, we drunk, we did everything. Yeah. And um, it wasn't until, honestly, it wasn't until uh, I met my wife. Um, she was my girlfriend at the time too. Uh, we met, I was, we were both 19. Um, and it was my, it was the summer of my sophomore. Yeah, the summer going into my sophomore year that we met. And, or no, actually it was the fall. Sorry, it was the fall going into my sophomore year. You better get it right. Right, I gotta get it right. <laughs> it was in the fall of, the, of our sophomore year, of my sophomore year. She was actually just graduating high school. And um, when we met, and it was just like, it was like love at first sight when I saw her. Cause we met in church, which is ironic. But at the same time, it was like, man, it was like, I really wanna know more about her. I really wanna know more about, you know, everything about her. And then it was, it, of course, we were in the church, but we still were doing our own thing. You know, we yeah. were um, getting it in <laughs> before um, before marriage, and we were just, you know, enjoying life. And honestly, it wasn't until we we had our first child. Uh, my son was born. Ironically, <laughs> uh, I, we were 23, uh, wow. a year after you. <laughs> we were 23, and when my son, when, when we found out that she was pregnant, um, it was so, it was kind of like a full circle moment mm -hmm. too, because my mom, she, um, the Lord healed her from cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, but it came back and, um, in 2013, um, ironically the same year that my son was born, my mom passed, um, mm -hmm. but she was actually able to be there to, um, to witness him being born and to hold mm -hmm. him and, and to have that moment with him. And mm -hmm. it's so, it's so, um, heartwarming. Sorry if I'm getting a little bit emotional, but I think about it time. Because like when my grandma, her mom, when right before she passed, I was born. And so we kind of hold that same bond, mm -hmm. that same memory of our grandparents. Like my mom, my grandma, she passed mm -hmm. right before um, I was an infant, a really small baby. And the same with my son. You know, my mom passed, he was a really small baby. And he, of course, he doesn't have that memory of her or anything like that. It's up to me to keep it going. But, you know, he, he has that moment that he, that, that bond that's there. And I believe that's going to be there for a lifetime because I still, I know it sounds kind of weird, but to this day, I still feel like my grandma's presence um, mm -hmm. around me. I feel like she's like my guardian angel, um, if anyone believes in stuff like that. But, <laughs> but I feel like she's, she's been watching out for me. She's been looking out mm -hmm. for me. Um, but yeah, and like when my son was born, that's really when we really started getting really serious about God. And it was like you, I had that same moment. As soon as um, they, the doctors put them, put them in my arms, it was like, man, this kid is just it's like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And it was when we got home and I was just holding him and it was like, I just felt God's presence. I just felt mm -hmm. him speak to me and say, this is how much I love you. The way, the yeah. same love that you have for this kid, that it doesn't matter what they do, who they become, you're going to love them unconditionally. That's how I feel about you. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, God, and I made a Facebook stats and everything. Cause that's, <laughs> as soon as it happened, I was like, yeah, I got to put this out here. I understand how God feels about me now. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just a, a, a overwhelming moment. Um, and to this day, I mean, I love my son to death. There's nothing that he could do. There's nothing that my daughter could do. There's nothing that my future child could ever do that will just yeah. turn me from them. Like, I don't, I, I really don't care. Like, I love my kid and I just mm -hmm. can't, I can't fathom being that parent that would just turn on a child because, you know, they may think differently now or right. they became homosexual or something like right. that. I mean, right. that stuff, I don't, it, it's kind of disgusting to me, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it just makes me more hungrier to share the word, to yeah. share the gospel, because, you know, we should have that unconditional love for our kids, mm -hmm. no matter what, you know, yeah. we are their protector. Like right. right. as fathers, we are definitely their protector. We're, we're the protector of the whole family, but first we are definitely the shepherds of the family. Uh, and we have to maintain that at all costs. And I, I, yeah. We can, we can talk about kids and family all day <laughs> and get nothing done. <laughs> but that's just two, that's just two fathers passionate about their families, man. I love that because, you know, a lot of people need, a lot of people need to see that. A lot of people need to see a lot of young 
um, married fathers um, in ministry that loves their family, loves their kids, yeah. and understands now um, just the fullness and totality of God's love for us. Because mm -hmm. that's powerful. And I feel like nobody would really understand it um, until you have kids. Until yeah. you have kids on your own, you will never understand fully um, how God feels about you. Mm -hmm. You may get it beforehand if you, you know, decide to live the Paul life and, you know, just be an apostle for all your days and just never, <laughs> never know marriage and never know kids. But, you right. know, you, <laughs> you know, you can, you, you will eventually get it. But, you know, I feel like every, every person will, will never truly fully understand just God's love entire, in its entirety, his unconditional love until you have kids yourself. Yeah. You just feel it. It's, 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 it's un it's undescribable. It's like, you can't really talk, you can't really put a, a single word to describe it. Yeah. And that's just how I feel. Okay. I mean, I, yeah, so we'll keep going, let's keep rolling. <laughs> so, um, when you were called to ministry and yeah, when you were called to ministry, did you answer right away? And if not, why did you ignore the call and what prompted you to eventually acquiesce or eventually, you know, heed the call? Right. I, uh, so when I was first called in the ministry, I, um, I knew that the Lord was working and doing something in my heart. It wasn't, uh, this, this pretty clear and like, okay, you're going to do this full time. Like I kind of like dipped my toes in the water and just started doing ministry that way. Uh, and so that was pretty easy. There was not a lot at stake for me right. to, to lose or it was pretty easy to just step in and start serving um, and start um, caring and doing youth ministry for and caring for kids, uh, okay. students, I should say. Um, <laughs> and I remember when, when I had that kind of that revelation of, of, of me being this leader, this youth leader, but having that wrong perspective and being focused on fruit instead of the root. And the Lord started calling me to be uh, to be this missionary that would go to Latin America and, and work with leaders. That was a little bit different. <laughs> uh, and and that for me was I, I didn't heed that call immediately. Yeah. I said, OK, God, like I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it in my time. Yeah. Um, because I know what being a missionary uh, requires and it requires me having to raise my own support. And that is yeah. uncomfortable. Um, and so that freaked me and it, and it freaked my wife out too. Um, that was always a big thing for us was like, we trust the Lord in, in anything. Like we would go wherever he wanted us to go, do whatever he wanted us to do. But, and, and but when it came to like our finances, it was like, yeah, I know that the Lord's provided me with these jobs that I have and, and that's from him. But if I'm low on finances, I can go out and work. I yeah. can do that. That's yeah. on me. Right. Exactly. Um, and knowing that I, I would have to depend on the Lord to provide a hundred percent of everything mm. and my finances being the biggest thing to pay my bills and to buy groceries like that freaked me out, man. And so I came up with a plan. I said, you know what, I'm going to start a business. Mm -hmm. uh, this was in 2018. And I don't know if you, it, it's become a bigger thing now, but it wasn't then ax throwing. Oh yeah. Um, these ax throwing bars and, and venues are popping up all over the place. Right. And, uh, I decided I, and it was just starting to, to come into popularity Mm -hmm. uh, before that had really hit. And I was like, I'm going to start an axe throwing company and build this up to a point where I can have this side stream of income coming in and then I'll go be a missionary. And I remember talking to a pastor friend of mine and he from Colorado and was telling him my plan for how I was going to build my business, grow my, grow my business up to this point where I could um, not have to support raise. And I would just have all of this money from my business to provide for my ministry. And then I would go be a missionary. <laughs> and he said, Paul, can I, can I tell you something? And if, if you've ever heard those words from a dear friend of yours, you know what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I thought, all right, all right, go ahead. And he said, it, it sounds to me uh, that you pretty well know what God's asking you to do. Why aren't you doing it? Mm. And I thought, oh, man, talk Good. about a punch to the gut. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he, he referred back to the story of when Moses sent the 12 spies to spy out the land of Canaan and they went and 10 of them, um, came back and reported that, Oh no, there's these giants in the land. Like they're going to squash us and they're going to, they're going to kill us. There's no way that we can take and overpower them. Um, but the Lord had promised that he would be with them, but because of their unbelief, 
Mm-hmm. They didn't get to inherit the promised land. Right. They wandered in the desert for 40 years. Yep. And my friend said, Paul, I don't want you to miss the promised land. I said, not that your salvation's at stake, but I don't want you to miss what God has in store for you. Wow. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Like, okay. Um, <laughs> so I prayed about that and for, for a couple weeks. And, and the whole time, like when I would talk about support raising with my wife, she would be like a, almost like a little, a little kid. She would like cover her ears and be like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and, and when I said, when we were, when I told her like, this is what God's doing in my heart. And this is like, we need to step out and do this. And, and we prayed about it. Like she was like, okay, we're going to do it. And I was just mm-hmm. like, man, like the God, it was Jesus. at work. Yeah. And um, man, it's not been easy at all. I will tell you that. Um, it has been a challenging season. We stepped out. Um, uh, March of 2019 is when we came on with this missions organization. And I, my goal, I was working for my father at the time and he required a six month notice before I quit. (laughs) And, uh, so I fulfilled that six month notice and was thinking that I would have had support raised to replace my salary. So I could go out and focus a hundred percent, uh, on, on raising the rest of my support Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do this. That didn't happen because of the nature of my work. I traveled around and was in different places every day. And I just couldn't sit down and meet with people. Right. And so here we go. God came in again and said, okay, like what's getting in the way? What's not allowing you to do what I've asked you to do and to be able to raise support? And I was like, well, my job with my dad. He said, you're right. I need you to quit. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Okay. And in a matter of a month, maybe a month and a half, God brought us a, a launch fund to have our, our expenses covered, uh, groceries, mortgage, like all of that stuff covered for a period of four months so that I could focus 100% on raising support. So I quit my job with my dad February 1st of this year. And then what happened in March? Well, <laughs> coronavirus, <laughs> um, which made it really hard to raise support. Yeah. But I will tell you that God has provided every step of the way. Wow. It's not always been through new partners coming on. It's been through um, this, some things that my wife is doing, um, just some like a little side business that she had, like making bracelets and stuff like that. And the Lord's been providing through that, like wow. pretty dang well. And it's been incredible. Wow. Um, and so, man, it's not always been easy. And it's definitely shaped my faith. And it took me from this perspective of like, oh, I don't want to do that because I'm afraid and because of the, of the uncertainty that comes with it to a place now where I'm like, I don't want to live any other way mm. because of the, I get to see God work miracles daily in my life. Exactly. And that encourages me to keep moving forward and to keep doing what he's called me to do because I see him provide every single day. Wow. And it's, I don't want to be in any other place than that. Wow. I love that. And that, and, it, and honestly, you're helping me because I'm wrestling with that right now uh, in a sense, because for me, it's, that's always been my thing. I've always said I didn't want to get into ministry because I don't want to be one of those guys that's um, like a hindrance. And I'm, I'm mm-hmm. always asking for money or always, you know, I'm using ministry to try to provide for my family. I never want to do that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like, I feel my heart pulling more more towards ministry than my my own nine to five job that i have right now like we've been working from home since march like i said we've been working home since march and that doesn't excite me as much as what i'm doing right now (laughs) and it's like i'm i'm working now like literally my laptop is over there mouse is right here i'm just doing whatever i can to keep it going green (laughs) but but it's like you know i I, i'm appreciative because you know I, i do feel like god has blessed me with this job for a reason because Mm -hmm. um because of the nature of this job um we're busy you know maybe one or two days out of the month the rest of the month it's you know i don't say i'm scotch free but the rest of the month you know we're tweaking some things we're we're looking at some things but the rest of the the rest of my days i'm not really don't have nothing to do and it has given me the opportunity to really focus on this stuff to work, focus on, you know, work in the ministry, focus on him, um, seeking him more and doing more things mm-hmm. in ministry. And honestly, it's like, I had this conversation with, um, with my, uh, my friend Brandy and she was like, so do you see God taking you away from that nine to five? I was like, 
yeah, that was like a gut punch. <laughs> she was like, I know God has told you, it was like, you know, he's giving you, like, do you see God taking you away from that? I was like, yeah, but I don't know when, because <laughs> this pays really good, and I don't know when that's going to happen. But <laughs> but at the end of the day, I, you know, I do believe that God will definitely provide, and I, I truly wholeheartedly believe that he is going to provide. Like, your testimony right there, that just encourages me to keep going, keep doing what I'm doing and to, you know, trust God even more um, in that area. Because that's, that's one thing I was always, I'm always scared of like, you know, and I, I feel like a lot of people feel that way too. You know, it, I, I need, I need this to happen this way. And if it don't happen that way, then, and I trust that God, I'm going to feel bad if, if I'm let down or if something that, if it doesn't come through, but mm-hmm. in honesty, you know, God, you know, he's going to provide for us either way. I, I've mm-hmm. seen, I've seen, I've seen that happen firsthand. Um, just the journey to me getting this job that I'm in, I'm on now, you know, it was, it was a rocky roller coaster and we literally, we moved down here. We've been in the Charlotte area for a month. We moved down from um, the Raleigh Durham area and <clears throat> excuse me. And it's really been a step of faith for us. Um, every single step of the way, every single month, it was like, it was a challenge. Uh, I, I hate to say it, but it was like, we were going through hell every single month. Um, and it was just like, just, it was coming at all angles from, you know, whether it's the job or it's, you know, personal things going on, um, things happening at church. And it was just like, God, why is all this stuff happening to us at one, at one time? Um, and honestly, it was, there were moments when I was like, I don't even know if we'll be able to survive, you know, for the month. I don't know how we're going to pay this bill, how we're going to pay that bill. And God has just constantly showed me, he was like, I will take care of y'all provide. You know, I have people, um, I have a gift stored up. I actually did, I, I did this sermon. Um, I used to do campus ministry um, at NC State um, prior to moving down here because um, I was one of the campus ministers and campus ministry, that's my heart. I love campus ministry. Um, it's just a side note. <laughs> I love campus ministry. When I was, when I was doing campus ministry, that's how I felt. Um, I felt that that is how you really build church that's how you build a church that's how you build a ministry you have to really be patient and all that good stuff but that's another time for another day but i i did a sermon i did a message um, on a bible study um to where uh, um, i i spoke uh, back in january um and it was basically i came out of uh, i can't remember the scripture right now but i i was preaching about paul um and how he was talking about there's a gift um, and he was excited about um, the church. It was in Philippians. Now, I, now it's coming back. Philippians 4. Um, and he was talking about how the, he was excited about the Philippian church and how they heeded the command of God um, by sending him a gift. And it wasn't the fact that he was excited about the gift. He was just more excited about their obedience. Right. And the fact that they obeyed God and sent him a gift. Um, they didn't know that, you know, what he was going through. They just sent him the gift. And actually he was going through one of the worst times of his, of his life. He was imprisoned and that gift gave him a shot in the arm, gave him, it, it, it lifted his spirit. And that's what I preached about. And I said that God is, is, you know, he has people stored up waiting to gift you something, to give you something. And you don't, you don't get excited about the gift, but you get excited about the person who is being obedient to God. You get excited about that. Mm-hmm. And I remember teaching that and literally that same week <laughs> I received bad news about my job. And I was like, God, you are really <laughs> testing me <laughs> on this message that I just preached. But what I ended up seeing was like, I ended up seeing God really live that out through me. Mm-hmm. And um, it just so happened, like we had a situation that happened and my dad called, I mean, we went to my dad's house and he was like, son, he was like, why you didn't ask me for, um, for money or why you didn't ask for help? It was like, first of all, we're men. We're not going <laughs> to, we're going to figure it out on our own. We're not going to sit there and be like, dad, can you help me please? <laughs> but he was like, why you didn't ask me for help? You know, ever since I started this job, I've been putting money, I've been setting money aside so that whenever you needed help, you can ask mm-hmm. me for it and you will have it. And it just so happened that when I, when he said that, I was like, God, that was the moment that I was like, God, I see you. I feel mm-hmm. you because I wasn't excited about the gift because he ended up giving me uh, money to help me out in that situation. And I wasn't excited about the gift, but I was excited about his obedience because yeah. he literally in that moment was being obedient to God. 
God spoke to him months in advance and said, hey, start putting this money aside for your kid because your kid is dumb. <laughs> and it was like, he did exactly that. And it just blessed me. And it just so happened, like, uh, a couple months ago, actually, one of, the, one of the students reached out to me and was like, you know, uh, Elder McKnight, I'm so happy for you. And, and I'm praying for you. You know, I just want you to know that, you know, that message that you preach, you know, it really helped me during this pandemic, everything that we're going through, you know, it's really helping me out. And I'm like, I preached that message back in January. Here it is. <laughs> May, you reaching out to me and you're, and you're still excited about it. You know, that, you know, gives me another shot in the arm too. Cause it's like, you know, Hey, I'm really doing what God has taught me to do. I'm doing what he has told me to do. And it's really being impactful in people's lives that they're still thinking about it <laughs> to this day. So man, I love that. Um, and I, I can talk even more, so I'm just going to stop. <laughs> As you see, I love talking, man. I'm weird. So um, what motivated you to pursue ministry? Mm. Uh, man, I think that that is, uh, that kind of goes back to the what's your why question as well. Yep. Um, for me, it was just obedience. It was like, okay, I felt the Lord calling me to do this. And, and I wanted to, to respond in obedience to that. But um, what, what motive, my motivation was to, to reach young people, man. Cause I, as a young person myself, I wish that I would have had somebody to step into my life in this and to come alongside me. And maybe I wouldn't have made some of the poor choices that I made. I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thankful for those choices because it led me to where I am today. Um, but I think if you're in ministry uh, long term, there's always going to come a point in your in your ministry, probably several times, um, where you say like, "Why am I doing this? Why am I pursuing this? Why do I continue to do this?" Like, it would be so much easier to just go back and get a job get on salary somewhere and just, and just get a paycheck. Like, man, that'd be, that'd be so easy because ministry is, is hard and it's often lonely. Yeah. Um, if you don't have a healthy community around you. Mm -hmm. And so this, I would say the second, I'm talking about roots. I would say the second most important thing for you to have, um, as a minister is a healthy community around you. That's good. Going back to this same concept of a, of a tree, right? What is, you got the roots and then you've got the trunk of the tree, right? And the trunk, it helps um, not only protect the innermost parts of the tree where all of the, uh, the, or the conduit basically that sends the nutrients up the tree and the water, but it also helps support the weight of the branches and the fruit of the tree. Right. And that's what community, I mean, we have to put a community around us to help um, protect our hearts, mm -hmm. to help protect our marriages, to help protect our family and to help support the fruit of the ministry that one day is going to come. Right. And so when, when I think back to, you know, what's, what motivates me to pursue that ministry, uh, I would say it is that calling of just reaching young people and helping them have a healthy perspective of what it looks like to follow Christ. Yeah. Not that it's just, Oh, I'm a set a prayer and I'm, and I'm good. Like know that it's an everyday relationship where you need to grow. It's just like, like, you, you know, our marriages, right? Yeah. If, uh, if I married my wife and was like, all right, uh, I'm out. I'll, I'll see you at some point. And be like, <laughs> Hold on. You're not going to come back to that same kind of level of relationship that you had. Exactly. Um, and so, man, we got to pursue that and to help people walk in that pursuit, uh, I think is what motivates me to continue ministry. Um, and, but to get to that point of, when you do face that question of why am I doing this? Why don't I just quit? Um, which I've, I've faced several times. I actually faced it um, probably about four or five months ago um, in my support. I was super discouraged with my support raising and how it was going. And this pandemic that hit in the middle of me quitting my job. Um, and I remember just going out and in, uh, into the woods. So that's a big part of what I do is like, uh, just in my regular time of retreat and rest um, to help, you know, shape my own faith and my own heart. Mm -hmm. uh, I go out to the woods and I go camping for a night to just spend listening to the voice of the Lord, much like Jesus often did. Yeah. Uh, and I remember going out there and I was camping and I was uh, reading through Matthew six uh, at the time. And it's right after his sermon on the mountain. Mm -hmm. He says, Hey, 
you know, don't worry about tomorrow, right? Don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. Look at the birds. Yeah. They don't store away in barns. They don't, you know, put all of this stuff aside and pack it in. Like, but I provide for them, mm. right? Look at the flowers. They're dressed more beautifully than Solomon ever was. Yep. And, and I just started thinking, I was like, man, like God is going to provide no yep. matter what. And my why, when I, when I get back to that or going back to why am I continuing this is I, I think about the, uh, in John, I think it was John chapter six, um, when the, the, the rich young man, um, that wanted to follow Jesus, yeah. uh, turned away. And so some of the disciples did too. He said some turned and followed no more. Yeah. He just turns and he looks at his disciples and he says, are you two going to leave? Hmm. And what did they say? He said, Lord, where are we going to go? Right. You have the words to eternal life. Yep. And, and that is what I always go back to is where am I going to go? Mm. What am I going to do? That. Like Jesus has the words to eternal life. And even if I did step away, I would be, oh, I would be so empty and so just longing to be fulfilled that I can't even think about going away because, man, Jesus has given me everything yes. um, to think of and to think of just the wicked man that I was. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I was very much like a prodigal son. I didn't go and say, Hey dad, give me the inheritance, but everything the prodigal son did, that was me. <laughs> and, and his mercy and his grace as he welcomed me back and called me back into his arms. I thought, man, that is so worth telling everybody that I know yeah. because if God can take a wicked, wicked, self-centered sinner like me and do the things that he's doing to spread his, his hope and his joy and his mercy and his grace. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he has, he can do that for anybody. Yeah. So man, I would say that's what motivated me and continues to motivate me. I love that. I love that. And that's that is so spot on. It is so spot on because, you know, to your point, man, I just think about, you know, if I were to quit right now, I wouldn't even know what I would do. Like, mm -hmm. where would I go? Like, I've, I know too much. I've done too much. I know God so much in this, in, in, in this current season. And, and just from everything that I've, I've gathered, gathered over the years, it's like, I'd be a fool to turn around and just lay it all down and be like, you know what, God, I'm done. Like there's, there's nothing in this world that will ever turn me from God that will ever turn me from my love for Jesus. And I, it, it breaks my heart to see many people leave the faith, um, especially when they've been in it for a while and they just uh, suddenly just leave. And it makes me wonder, it's like, you know, what, what really caused that? I mean, of course, a lot of it has to do with church hurt or maybe hurt from just other, you know, experiences outside of the church. And it, it really moves me to see people that just leave because of another thought or another opinion that, you know, that they just gravitates to. But yeah when I think about, you know, just myself mm. and like, and I just look at what God has done for me and I'm pretty sure you feel the same way too. It's like, there's no turning back. It was like, yeah. I just can't see my life without God just to see just, just how much he has blessed me with mm. just to see the blessings, just look around and like being able to just breathe. That's just the simplest blessing. Yeah. And I give credit to, to God for that. So yeah. we're going to, we're going to keep rolling because I, 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 I can keep talking and I'm enjoying the conversation. You probably got other things to do and I, it's, we way over time. <laughs> enjoying it, Thomas. I really am. Um, yeah. So um, uh, how, can you, um, how can your why inspire someone else to find their minute or to find their why? How can my why inspire someone else? Um, man, that is such a good question. And I think that that's just the, the unique part of all of our journeys is, is that each of us has a why. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be different than everyone else's. I mean, it's going to look a little bit different. But at the, at the core of that, the, the reason for the why should just remain the same. Yeah. Just glorify God, right? And to, as, I, as I think about that, as that, that concept of just like glorifying God, I mean, how do we do that? Like, how do we glorify God? And I, and I always, and I go back to um, John 15 as well. Like John 15 is like my life scripture, dude. Like I just, every bit of it is so good. And like, yeah. it's, um, 
if I had one scripture to ever just like, that's the only thing I could ever have, like I would have John 15. Um, <laughs> and I remember um, thinking about how do I glorify God? Well, John 15 tells us that um, it is to my, Jesus says, it is to my father's glory mm-hmm. that you bear much fruit, mm-hmm. proving yourselves to be my disciples. And we've already talked about how, well, how do we bear much fruit? Well, you remain in Christ. You be, abide and be rooted in Christ. And man, I don't think anybody can go wrong um, at, if that is their, their why. If that is the, the core of their why is to bring glory to God by producing fruit. And that comes from abiding in Christ. Yeah. Um, and so, man, I would just tell people that if, um, you know, if, if they're looking for their why, let that be the, the heart of their prayer when they're asking God okay, God, what is it that I can do? Like, what, what am I passionate about? How have you gifted me? Uh, and what, what talents do I have? Um, because each of us do have those giftings and talents and passions, and they were given to us by God mm-hmm. for a reason, to glorify him, right? And they're all, we're all uniquely different in that. And I think that's what makes the body such a beautiful thing. It does. Is because it all works together for the good of the people, for the good of the body, and for the glory of God. And as we're doing that, and I tell people this, like, as we are walking, and Paul uses this phrase, um, as, as, as we are walking in a manner worthy of the calling that we have received, um, and we're using those giftings, we're using those passions, we're using those talents, that is where you are going to feel fulfilled the most, hmm. right? Right. And uh, so I think a lot of people too, what, what kind of turns them away from um, Christianity. And I was just talking with somebody the other day, um, not, not a believer. And they were just like, I don't want to follow all these rules and like have to do all this stuff. And, um, and I was just thinking like, you know, when you're walking in, in, in the way that God has created you and with the passions and giftings that he has given you, there is nothing more fulfilling than that. Nothing. You're living the dream, man. Right. Like, what you get to do and and i tell people that all the time that um like it's the two the two things that i love the most in this world to do um well it's just the two things i love the most is jesus and i love telling people about jesus and what he's done for me and i love doing adventurous wilderness crazy things and i am working for an organization where i get to do those things and god knew that when he created me and that's why he called me to do that now had i been disobedient man, what would I be doing right now? Would I be as fulfilled? Would, would the journey has been as, um, um, as, as revealing and, and growing in my own faith? I don't know. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> man, it's, the journey is, is very scary. And so I would tell people as they are looking for that and looking for their why, man, so many times, especially with young people, they want God to lay out their whole life plan. Yeah. When God's just saying, hey, I just want you to take a step. Just one step. I'm not going to show you everything. Right. You can't handle that yet. Right. <laughs> I just want you to take the leap. That's it. Just take the leap. Because <laughs> honestly, that's that's really what it, what it is with me. Like you just have to take the leap. You know, right. if you if you don't take that leap, you'll always be wondering, well, what if I did take that leap? You know, what if I did do it? And you you're doing your own thing, and as you keep going and doing your own thing, you you constantly that's constantly in the back of your mind, you know, yeah. hypothetically, like man, if I would have obeyed God then, like where would I be now? Like I I think about that now because there were times when God gave me things to do back in the day, and I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna do my own thing. Right. And I look at my life now, and everything I'm doing now, in compare in comparison to what I would have been doing or should have been doing back then it's like god if i would have done that back then where would i be today and mm-hmm. you know of course it's me it's 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 a sense of regret but at the same time it's not because mm-hmm. you know god you know takes us on our own journey he knows he gives us the free will to do whatever we want to do um and to obey him or not and but you know to be walking in obedience now you know it's so much refreshing it's just like mm-hmm. you said it's it's so much better to be walking in obedience than to be walking, you know, doing your own thing and just, you know, constantly like, God, why is this happening? Why is that? So I'm with you, bro. I'm with you. So mm-hmm. we, our time is far spent. <laughs> <laughs> I love this conversation, man. I love you. I love your spirit. I love everything that you're doing. Um, I'm, I'm definitely, um, I'm going to sow into you, into you, man. I'm going to give you something. Um, 
I, I believe that, you know, I believe in what you're doing. I love that you are taking your ministry um, to, to other countries. I love that you're actually doing that. Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that you are just moving and flowing, you know, as you were telling me your story and everything like that, God just literally laid it on my heart to sow into you. Um, mm-hmm. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, so we'll do all that offline. I'll get your information, all that good stuff. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I love what you're doing. I love your ministry. You know, I'm, I'm definitely going to be praying, continuing to pray um, and hold you up before God that he mm-hmm. continues to, you know, pour into you, continue to provide to, um, for you, even in this season of, of uncertainty and everything that's going on. You know, he's constantly showing that, hey, I'm going to look out for you. I'm going to take care of you. And, you know, my gift is just a small gift <laughs> to, you know, the many things that you know, to what God is going to do for you. And I really believe that, you know, God is going to really expand your ministry, expand your growth. And I'm not just saying that to, to try to sound good or anything like that. This is truly how I feel. I feel like God is really going to expand you and really, you know, take you to another place, take you even higher and allow you to see things that. Um, you haven't been able to see before you've been praying about these things you've been seeing about these things but God is going to allow you to see it more in the natural he's going to allow you to 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 walk into it even more and it may sound prophetic or anything like that I, it's just how I feel and what God is really downloading in, in me to give to you um, right now so I, I really appreciate you taking this time to speak with me to meet with me to be a part of the um the one faith radio station channel whatever you want to call it <laughs> the podcast everything you know I'm praying for you and your wife um your three kids you know I, I really do love what you're doing and that you know your sacrifices everything that you're doing it's not going in vain it's not going in vain so um, where, can people, where can people find you to connect with you and your ministry bro yeah um man I'm before that just thank you for that man thank you for your heart thank you for what you're doing here with this one faith man john 17 right the high priestly prayer the last thing jesus prayed for before he went to the cross yep. was that his people would be unified yep. so man i'm 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 right there with you dude and I, I love your heart i love your passion for that uh and that's what we need right now and in, in such a time as this that is what this world needs um and so, man, i'm 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 alongside of you to, to stand with you and fight that battle uh man you're my brother in christ and uh, dude, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, bro. I'm with you. Um, awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I, for where can people find me? Um, I'm on Instagram at, uh, P underscore Wingfield. Um, I have a website. You can find me at Paul J Uh, that's probably the easiest place to find everything. Uh, I also have a podcast called, uh, one man and his wilderness. Uh, where I talk with leaders around the world that are utilizing wilderness adventure uh, as a tool to evangelize and disciple young people in their cultures. Um, and you can find every bit of that stuff uh, on my website. Those are probably the two, two easiest places to find me. <laughs> awesome. Dope. Yeah. Who um, uses Facebook anymore, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> So definitely uh, send me your, um, your information, um, your podcast stuff, your, um, um, uh, a nice picture of, of what you do and everything. I'm going to put it on my website so that, you know, as people, as this air, people, you know, I point people to the website, they, they go check out your stuff and it'll definitely direct them to your website and everything that you're doing. I appreciate that, so that, you know, people want to sell, people want to help out in what you're doing. They love mm-hmm. your ministry. They can do all that. So, yeah. all right, bro. I appreciate it, man. No problem, no problem. I appreciate you more than anything, man. So I, I thank you for this time. I know our time is far spent. You got other things to do. You have to go out in the wilderness and be like John the Baptist and <laughs> baptize and everything. <laughs> I don't eat locusts, though. Right? I do like locusts, just not locusts. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. I love you, and thank you for taking this time, bro. And have a uh, good one. I love you, too, brother. I appreciate the time. Awesome. Oh, 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 oh,